The next interesting thing is uh, running an open source organization. So again, I'll talk a little bit about what I know. I don't really know how other organizations are run or how they work. I just know what works for, for D and what doesn't work for D. Starting with me. I've run businesses before, like the Northwest Software, the C compiler business, uh, the C++ compiler business, and, you know, to be rather brutal about it, I'm really not very good at it. You read all those things about the pointy-haired bosses and their idiot decisions, that's me. <laughs> I've, I've tried firing myself, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, when there's something wrong with the software, sometimes I've posted that I've, you know, sacked the QA staff, and. Some people get very unhappy with that, saying, I didn't mean for somebody to lose their job, and I said, you don't understand, I'm the QA staff. <laughs> um, I have minimal people skills. It's just the truth. What you see up here, it's take me a long time to get to this point. <laughs> so I know that uh, software programmers are, you know, kind of feel introverted or something like that, but have faith, you can get better at it but I still wouldn't call myself um, very good at it. If you come to a conference like this, you'll often see me off in the corner somewhere. I created the initial compiler by myself and passed it around to a few friends, and most of them laughed at me, saying, you know, why are you developing a new language? Nobody wants a new language. And one person was interested enough to write a Slashdot article about it, and all of a sudden, things started happening. And I thought, well, I'd better get the compiler in good working order and stop you know, messing around with it. And interestingly enough, people started wanting to help. They would get excited about it and go, how can I help? And they would email me patches. And the tool you most use is the one you're most familiar with, and I was familiar with email, so email became my version control system. How many people use email for version control? Uh, uh. How many people use the disk in the drawer as a version control system? I guess none of you are that old. <laughs> the shoebox with disk drives with uh, floppy disks in it used to be my older version control system. Um, how many use uh, email as the bug list? And nobody, boy, you guys are sophisticated. <laughs> Did the to-do list? Oh, 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 there's more of you with that. Okay, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and I, I'm as guilty as everyone on this. And people wanted to contribute, they would just start doing things. Like Brad Roberts just decided to set up Bugzilla because he was tired of my email bug list. Um, Somebody else set up uh, SVN for revision control, and then, you know, SVN really was getting kind of creaky, and we needed something new. And with a great deal of analysis and forethought and careful consideration, we simply flick, flipped a coin and picked what was most popular, which turned out to be GitHub, which turned out to be one of the best decisions we ever made. GitHub has, as a collaborative tool to work on software, has just revolutionized D. It's been fantastic. Um, some other people collaborated and came up with a real test suite. So we were actually testing the software we were shipping. And as you can see from my slides, I do not have a talent for visual design. <laughs> my websites kind of look like this, just, <laughs> just the facts in a completely spare manner. So they would design the website and more started fleshing out the uh, ecosystem, like adding uh, Visual D support um, and the forum software and things like that. And it's kind of weird, but some sort of order emerged from complete chaos. This kind of uh, organization would have never worked before the internet because people on every continent except Antarctica, and I'm not even sure about that, um, 
you know, they're down there, you know, all winter sitting in the room, maybe they're helping out. <laughs> they all work on D, um, and it's all merit-based. We don't even know, a lot of them, we only know through their handles, their online things. We don't know who they are. We don't know how old they are. We don't know what sex they are. We don't know what religion they are. We really don't care. All we care about is how good are you. So I'm, I'm very proud that you know, we have a very uh, merit-based ecosystem of contributors. In the future, uh, we're going one step further. Andre, Ale my partner Andre Alexandrescu, is setting up a D Foundation, which then will become sort of a legal organizational focal point for people who want to help in a more sophisticated manner, like uh, becoming corporate sponsors. Um, now, Dirk talked about licensing. Licensing is one of the most critical decisions you make when starting an open source project, and we chose Boost. And we chose Boost because it was the closest license to public domain we could find. It was well known. And corporate lawyer approved. That turned out to be really important because we didn't want the license to be a barrier for anybody to use it. And you can use Boost license code, you don't have to give it back. You don't have to, uh, you can make a closed source app with it or not. You can contribute back if you want or not. You can do pretty much whatever you want with it except change the copyright notice. Um, you don't have to tag your binaries with it. And Boost, as probably a lot of you know, is uh, well known in the C++ community and they're kind of the wellspring for a lot of people who are interested in D, so they're already familiar with the license and it's become just kind of a no-brainer. A lot of open source developers decide they're going to invent their own license. This is a huge mistake. Because first off, software developers are not lawyers. And lawyers are lawyers for a reason. Uh, you can have serious mistakes in the license. And even if you are a lawyer and write a correct license, what happens is, is corporations have approved license lists. And if you're not on that list, they just aren't even going to look at your software. They're just not. It's not worth their while. Um, an approved license on their list is one that's been battle tested in court. Uh, people have argued about it. They settled it. They know what it's going to be. So it's a known quantity. So you, there are a lot of licenses to pick from. Pick a standard license. As I said before, the internet has enabled this whole distributed development system to even work. It would have been impossible to do by fax or how we did things in the, in the 80s. And the top tools that we use are, of course, GitHub uh, for the source code, Bugzilla for the bug list, uh, the forums. Um, actually, the DM D forum software was written by Vladimir Pantelev, all written in D, and it's very high performance. And <coughs> We use email, you know. And of course, Skype if we need to uh, talk, actually talk, which is kind of a rare thing these days. I've known a lot of people who've written some fabulous software. They'll spend thousands of hours writing this software. It's a beautiful piece of cra craftsmanship. They put out a brief announcement for it, and nothing happens. And then they get angry, and they get frustrated, and then they get bitter about it and quit. And it's really hard to see that happen to people. It happens over and over and over again. It happens because, you know, people think that marketing is bad. It's evil. But really, if you're not going to do it, you might as well not even bother writing the software. And what I mean by marketing is not doing pop-up ads or any of those other obnoxious things. I mean things like you got to write articles about it. You got to 
do presentations <laughs> about it. <laughs> you got to write books about it. Mm -hmm. Now, I write, I like writing books about as much as I like writing term papers for school. I hate it, and fortunately, other authors have kind of picked up the slack for me and have been writing books about D, so <laughs> it's kind of a relief. You have to be active in the tech forums and answering questions and helping people use it. And you've got to organize conferences. Uh, D runs a conference every year. The next one is in Berlin in May, which is very exciting. It'll be our first D conference in Europe, so of course you're all invited. Is that really, is that really so evil? <laughs> And I, you know, I know it runs against the grain for a lot of people to do this, but really, if you're going to spend thousands of hours developing a product, nobody's going to do this for you. You're going to have to get up and do it. Interesting thing about me is, like I said, I'm a very bad boss, and things are made even worse because the contributors to D are unpaid. They're volunteers, they're doing it simply because they love D. But since they're not paid, I can't tell them what to do. What am I gonna do, say do this or you're fired? They don't actually work for me. <laughs> they work for themselves, they work on what they want to. So how do we get them organized and working in the same direction? And so that's been a real learning experience for me on how to do that. And the number one thing to keep in mind is that without your team, you're nothing. The whole thing would, if the team up and left, D, D would collapse. So I can never forget that it's the team that makes it work. Me, I'm just kind of the sort of by default uh, representative for it. I never tell them what to do. I always try to convince them that it's the right way to go, so we have sometimes epic arguments about these things. <laughs> sometimes it's me against the whole community, they tell me I'm all wrong, and about half the time they're right. <laughs>